Knowledge is power. And this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Hi, happy Tuesday, everybody. This is Jennifer Solis with the Nevada Cannabis News. And to my right is Kurt Dukoch. We have Perry Haichu. Beach is our producer, and we have Lawrence on the board, who always makes me sound good. Today in studio, we have a special guest, and he's a tax guy, but he's a special kind of tax guy. His name is Michael Moore, and I'm not joking. His name is really Michael Moore. Um, Michael, Mm -hmm. you um, are a tax guy for not only MME businesses, but also for um, porn stars and the adult interest industry how did you get into that well i didn't uh, i didn't plan it. it it wasn't something that i actually planned i was noticing that um, i was looking at the paper and i said well the adult expo is here it was a few years back and i said well i'll i'll go there and drum up business and i thought well that's not a very good idea because i don't have any adult clients sure you know, it, to use as a hook and then I thought about it for a little bit. Well, wait a minute. There's that brothel. <laughs> there's that gentleman's club. Uh-huh. And there's those porn actresses. There's those fetish models. So I got to thinking, yeah, I do already serve the adult industry, and I might as well try to specialize in providing those services. Uh, you know, and like I said, I did not get into the adult industry intentionally. It was kind of accidental. I roll the calendar back a few years. I'm at my office, I get a phone call from a guy, and he says, I've got a tax problem, and I need to come see you. And he said, I was talking to my lawyers today. They said, you're the smartest guy they know, and I've got to come see you. And I said, well, you know, they're lawyers, so that means they lie a lot. <laughs> but I'm still willing to see you if you're willing to come on over. And he did. And he did have a complicated problem, but not a tough problem. And I said, here's how we're going to handle this. And I went through the various steps and I said, you're not going to owe any taxes. A matter of fact, this is going to trigger a loss that we can carry back and get you a refund. So of course he immediately thought I was a a real genius. genius. And, uh, but he kept talking about the ranch, the ranch, the ranch. And I said, uh, tell me about this ranch. And he said, well, uh, it's about 40 acres. And I thought, I said, listen, I don't want to be rude, but, you know, 40-acre ranch in Texas is anything but a big mud hole. <laughs> so he, he said, well, uh, and we talked more. And uh, he said, oh, it's, it's nice. You know, I got water and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay. Well, and after we finally finished talking about his tax problem, he said, now I can, now that I don't have to worry about a tax problem, okay. I can get my license back. And I said, license? What what license is that? And he says, I'm a brothel operator. The ranch is a, a brothel. And right I said, on. oh, okay. Well, you know, so, excuse me for being crude, so who knew that one day I was going to be an accountant for a whorehouse, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, and I, I didn't uh, plan on becoming, uh, taking care of the bookkeeping and the taxes for a topless bar, but a couple of my clients that I'd had for more than a dozen years their their father owned a club and he passed away and naturally his sons inherited and next thing you know i'm doing that so what you're saying is you know all the ins and outs of taxes (laughs) (laughs) that was coming wasn't it oh it was coming you set us up for it sorry (laughs) yeah <laughs> oh, so so knowing the adult industry and and you know all this kind of specialized I- problems and and issues that happen with the adult industry is that kind of what sparked your interest so so to say in uh, the MME industry? Uh, again, uh, one of my long term clients actually 
the son of a long-term client, came to me one day and said, I want to, uh, I'm going to make an application to be a cultivator. Okay. And uh, if you're aware, there's an awful lot of paperwork mm-hmm. that goes into one of those filings. And we, oh, were yeah. na- we were naturally the persons to help him with all the financial information that had to be provided. So we're... We're at that point where I suspect within a short period of time he'll be in production and we'll be keeping the books for that place too. Okay, um, so you've you've looked at all of the uh, MME standards for taxes and, and uh, do you believe that you have some tricks of the trade that you might be able to help uh, these MME operators with? Well, the, the, the single toughest issue which people talk about is Internal Revenue Code Section 280E. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. which has to deal with deductions against technically illegal income. Correct. And the sale of marijuana may be legal here. Medical marijuana may be legal in in Nevada, but it's not legal at the federal level. Yep. And, but the uh, uh, federal taxes is going to be collected. Uh, I I believe that, uh, this is an assumption on my part, but I believe that the only thing that's going to be allowed is a deduction against gross earnings will be something considered as cost of sales. Okay. And so I think that for most operations, they probably need to use the services of a really good cost accountant to help them to make the proper allocation to cost of sales. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and and that's when I started uh, having insomnia, I started reading tax code. And that's how, <laughs> and that's how I came up with starting a nonprofit because I started reading tax code and going, "Oh my gosh, look at this! Oh my gosh!" And foundation taxes and all of that type of stuff. It it it, it not only didn't help me with my insomnia because I came became very excited about things that I could do with you know taxes and the tax code and everything else, but it, it inspired me to start a nonprofit. So for most people, taxes and tax code are very, you know, very daunting and kind of dry business and stuff like that. But I, I really, uh, you know, applaud you for being able to bring some excitement into your life. Uh, <laughs> well, providing such a needed service, you know, there is such a, uh, how do I put this, a, a gross need for for financial professionals like yourself to be involved in this industry. And we're definitely, you know, grateful that you're able to to take your time to help us out with that because, you know, it's, they say good help is hard to find. And especially in this industry, sometimes that's true. So, you know, we just can't thank you enough for bringing your, your skills over to Las Vegas and uh, setting up shop. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, for sure. How long have you been here in Las Vegas? I moved here in uh, 1999. Oh, right on. Mm-hmm. And and you um, have uh, been a tax professional since you moved here? Uh, I've been doing bookkeeping and taxes for 40 years at least, more than 40. Well, what drew you to Nevada out of all the places in the world? You know? uh, the, the, a lie. Really? <laughs> a, for, a former client lied to me. <laughs> and, and and convinced me that I needed to move to Las Vegas to help her with her business. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I did, and it turned out that she lied to me about where she was with her business. Oh. And uh, so from there, I, you know, got back into public accounting work, so... Sure. You know what? That that's what brings a lot of people to Las Vegas. Lies. <clears throat> Lies. <laughs> well, you know... A lot of people look at uh, Vegas as kind of like a land of opportunity, just like other people in other parts of the world look to America as a land of opportunity. People say, oh, you know, there's this place where, you know, we can get these great jobs and we can make this great living and things. I've heard people from all over the country say it about Las Vegas and people really uh, have like a child like wonder to this town a little bit you know it's one of that loud those last bastions of hope for some people and it just really kind of warms my heart when i hear that people even though it didn't uh start under the best of circumstances you seem to have uh, settled in quite well and have done fairly well for yourself so i'm just glad the town's been been pretty good to you regardless of the false pretenses that you came here for well you know i'm always encouraging my you know i have clients all over the united states that uh, that i've never even met Oh, and uh, there was there was a, a period of time. Well, you know, I may have met him once, 
mm-hmm. uh, when I was uh, a guest lecturer at some asset protection seminars offered here in Las Vegas. And uh, from there, it, it you know, I was able to procure some clients through that and, and other things. But you know, I'm always asking the question, you know, when are you, when are you coming to Vegas mm-hmm. to visit next? And a lot of times they say, well, you know, I don't gamble. Ah, well, so? <laughs> gambling is the is the you know from my perspective one of the smallest things that that's available in in Las Vegas, world's greatest dining, yeah, and yeah. absolutely the greatest shopping in all the world. I, I I swear that a person can do more damage in one day shopping in Las Vegas than they could do in a week in New York or Beverly Hills. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and and I yeah, I got to tell you, we do have some great shops and some great deals here too. I've seen, uh, you know, at our uh, our little malls that was uh, that's over near the government center. I've seen people from everywhere around the world shopping there. Yeah, the Convention and Visitors Authority works very hard to try to pitch the diversity of Las Vegas. They just don't want people to see what's on the strip. They want us, you know, they want people to know that there's a lot of nature and beauty in this place. Also, that's what they were trying to pitch when they were trying to bring the uh, 2016 Republican National Convention. And they're like, look, we have all these houses of worship and all this other activities for you to do. It's not just all about sin here. You know, it's a great atmosphere for a family and things like that. It's not as bad as we try to make it out to be sometimes. The what happens here stays here slogan does very, very well for revenue, but sometimes it uh, drives away certain subsections of society that we would like to attract regardless. So, Well, I remember a few years back, they were trying to make it like a family-friendly town when they first opened the Circus Circus Adventure Dome, and it was like a big push to like make it, bring your family to Las Vegas. And that Oh, just, and MGM Grand yeah, had that, a theme park, We had too. all kinds of stuff. We had yeah. Red and Wild and all kinds of fun stuff yeah. on the Strip, but once again, you know. It kind of sizzled away. Well, <laughs> the revenue didn't pick up as fast as they wanted it to, so they had to change gears, and uh, ever since they got that slogan, you know, we've been increasing visitors' numbers ever since so <laughs> well what happens stay uh, what happens here stays, stays here, here that's right is not is not true in the case of herpes but you know <laughs> done <da-dun-dun>. um <laughs> or, or all kinds of <laughs> look you know or on youtube or facebook or anything else that happens here oh my days. like oh you, my. you saw what happened to that uh prince harry or whatever you know he's just having a party and in the, in the wind and all of a sudden he's getting naked pictures of himself taken and putting in the British tabloids and stuff so yeah what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas unless somebody yeah. else wants to know about it and you exactly. get caught on videotape anyway yeah, so for sure. if uh, some of our listeners wanted to get in touch with you and figure out how they could you know, get your services how would how would we find you online or phone number or? Uh, the, um, the the uh, URL is uh, xtaxpros.com and our our company phone number is 702 253 Seven four nine nine, and so, we're and we're excuse me, but we're and we're conveniently located <laughs> on, on the west side of town, at the intersection of Desert Inn and Torrey Pines. So that's so, so. Uh, that's great. X Tax Pros www dot x tax pros dot com, and your phone number again seven zero two two five three seven four nine nine. So if any of you MMEs out there need a tax pro on your side that with lots of interesting stories, just contact Michael Moore for sure. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on. Thank All right, you, you guys, uh, we're going to take a break and come back into our 420 moment. And uh, we're, we're, well, we got enough for a little news right now. We, we do? Little, we got a couple minutes left. Yeah. Uh, Let's go into it. Okay, I got outvoted. Hey, do you know what happened today? We just signed the LVCS for our 420 celebration. Oh, yeah, that's right. Freedom Festival. On uh, 419, I believe it is, right? Because 420 falls on a Monday, so we're holding it the previous Sunday. Yeah, we're doing it New Year's Eve style this year. We're going to be the first 420 party because ours is already going to be going at midnight. We're going to do a countdown to 420 and then top it off with a 420 roast at midnight. That's- we also have Miss. Uh, cannabis or miss uh, cannabis or is that what it is? Um, we're gonna have a beauty contest. Yeah, we're anyway. gonna have a cannabis girl beauty contest going okay. there. Also, lots of vendors and uh, and people. Uh, so, um, what time is it gonna, What time is it gonna start? We're gonna start kick it all off at five p.m. Five and p.m. So it goes until people are done. So that's at the Las Vegas Country Saloon upstairs from Hennessy's, and we'll have the entire top floor, correct? We'll have the brass lounge also with that. So oh, we'll yeah, have the yes. whole the whole thing all to ourselves, and then we'll have. Vendors and dab stations and all kinds of fun stuff. Is that correct? No, we're not going to have just that. vendors. Just we're going to have okay. vendors. We're going to have glass blowers, and you know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So 
We don't talk about it, but there it is. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we're, we're actually using the whole brass side. We're not going to be doing any music over on the brass side. That's going to be more like a little little festival area with uh, the vendors and that, and there'll be a bar. And then out on the patio, we're going to be uh, we're going to have somebody blowing glass out there, and we're also going to have uh, a two-man band, one that just paid, played at our potluck this last uh, weekend. Uh, the Bourbon Brothers are going to be out on out on the other stage. Very cool. We have Lady Rako and the Sin City Prophets already confirmed for reggae. We got the Signals are are confirmed. They're a really good uh, really jam good band. jam band. Uh, uh, we got a one legged Chuck from San Francisco coming down to play for us, and we got a headliner in the works. I don't want to say anything until we got it <laughs> until we got it locked in. But the headliner is is just going to be great. So we should we we'll have more on that on the next show. We'll be keeping our fingers crossed to hope that we can yes. uh, sign them. Yes, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to. All right. Well, Kurt, you also are going to do something interesting. You guys just put it up on our calendar. I think that um, this is going to be real of interest to a lot of patients. We're going to have cooking classes. Yeah, we're gonna we're doing cannabis cuisine cooking classes. Um, it's a it's a five week course. It starts out with uh, dosing and uh, and um, basic butters and oils, and then we move into um, advanced butters, oils, uh, clarified butters, flavored butters, and stuff like that. And then we the third class is going to be breakfast, brunch, and lunch. The fourth class will be uh, drinks and appetizers, and the fifth class will be dinners and desserts. These classes, uh, we're going to be the first few classes when we make the butters. The the people in the class have to be MME card holders, and they'll be able to take uh, take the butters home and experiment went experiment with them themselves. And that's going to kind of be their homework. They get to bring in the goodies that they make, and we get to try them. So. <laughs> oh, right on! Very cool. That's an unintended like bonus. There you go. And you can find all this information on meetup.com forward slash weekend702. It's free to join and sign up uh, for the classes through there. Um, and RSVP with integrity, please. So, all right, we're going on a break now. Okay, is everybody agreed about this? <laughs> yes, Brez. Yes. We're going okay. on a break now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go uh, on a break. We'll come back with our 420 moment and then talk about some uh, local and national news. Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000. To get your Nevada Medical Marijuana card today. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. <laughs> Welcome back. That sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. Uh, today we're going to honor our dear friend Andy. Uh, Andy from the Pool House. A lot of you got to meet him through many of the events that we've done throughout the years. Uh, he just recently lost his battle on the 13th. And uh, his wife Charlotte is over there now. And... You know, Andy was a great supporter of this movement. Andy was a great supporter of this movement. When I originally talked to him about um, hosting parties at his house, uh, he was all for it. Um, but as many of you do know Andy, Andy was just like, well, okay, after this party, we'll have a different kind of party. And I'm like, oh, Andy, no, our fringe crowd won't 
won't like that other French crowd. And he, <laughs> Andy was a great guy. Um, he was he was really funny, and he didn't like people to know that he was sick or that anything was going on with him. Um, and I've called several times and went over his house, and it it just he lost his battle uh, with his illness. And um, so this 420 moment is for you, Andy. And anybody got any more stories about Andy that they can share on air? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, he was just a really good guy. He, I mean, he opened up and donated his house to us to, you know, to raise money for the patients. And, you know, people like that, we have, we have lots of great people that surround us like that. And without them, you know, we wouldn't be able to do what we can do. So, you know, this moment goes out to all of those people that do no that doubt. for us, you know. And, and this one just particular to him because of, you know, his, our recent loss. All right. So did you guys hear about that news story where these uh, Asian people had electrified the ground? Well, um, oh, my gosh. I got, I, I got a piece of that story, too. Go ahead and lead off. Okay. It's, it's quite a well, there were thing. Two, there were two uh, Chinese nationals that were arrested on, on, on last Friday in connection with the largest marijuana grow house operations that Metro has ever encountered. Um, Miguel Garcia from the police department served a warrant at the home located in Grouse Grove Avenue near the intersection of Grand Canyon uh, Drive and West Patrick Lane. And the investigation was not only just a Metro investigation, it was a joint investigation huh, huh, with Metro and Las Vegas Energy. Okay, so this is a really and good way to trap the cops, oh, electrify yeah. the ground. <laughs> well, I, there is a guy who lives next door to me who's a Nevada Energy power theft investigator. It's all he does all day long. They have a whole team of people looking around for people who are doing this exact thing. So it's not really hard for me to believe that you know, they found these guys blatantly stealing power from the neighbors, not to mention it's insanely dangerous. You know. Yeah, they said the the, the power bill on that five bedroom house was seventy dollars a month. Four thousand square <laughs> foot house. That's nice. I got a two bedroom. I wish I could get it down to that. The four thousand square foot house's power bill was just seventy dollars. So if you're gonna be <laughs> smart about it, folks, you should have flipped on a more of some more lights. Yeah, it says the two men who were arrested were said to be sixty three and thirty seven years old and Chinese nationals both of them nearly every room of the five bedroom rental home was converted to grow marijuana one of the rooms had 360 plants police said wow that is wow that's impressive the, the <laughs> cops couldn't immediately go on in because the the ground was electrified so i mean I guess that's one way to stop they had to them. cut the power before they <laughs> yeah they, before had they, to, the they had to bring the power department in to, to make sure everything was safe well i was reading online there was like a little i guess a facebook thread or News 3 had posted this story and they were like, oh, you know, what do you, what does the public think about this story? You know, a thousand plants and this and that. And, and a few people are like, oh, you know, the police department should be spending their time looking at other things, you know, stop busting people for growing pot. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I hear you. But even as an advocate, this is getting a little ridiculous. Like, we f fought and advocated for a long time for the ability for people to do this legitimately. So if you want to grow a thousand plants, you can get a restricted license to grow a thousand plants. I mean, it's hard for me to feel sorry for you now mm. when the county rubber stamped almost 95% of the cultivation applications. I mean, if you had the money, they'd give it to you. And if you're growing that much and you're selling it, you should have the money. Well, no, not no only doubt. that, if you're growing that much, you're probably selling uh, on the black market. How much do you think this actually trickled down to patients, really? Well, probably none, or if so, very few. And it's like I said, if it, it's obviously about business. If you want to make it about business, make it about business. Go get a business license. Yeah. The neighbors weren't shocked by the bust because they, they were said, or were not. Were not. But up pump, but they were not shocked by the bus because they said that it reeked everywhere, but they couldn't tell oh, where it man. came from. It just was like a permeating smell of <laughs> all over the place. And of course, it's a rental house. Whoever owns the house has to deal with the, yeah. the oh, cleanup. Clean yeah, yeah, and the holes in the walls well, and all you know, the other stuff. They put how in Metro there. works is when they come in and they do a bust like that, they send you a bill for the cleanup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I understand, but that's usually uh, intended to punish the. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they do the that to the rental owner. Yeah, I don't think they. I would hope I they, they wouldn't the do perps. that to the homeowners. I no, no, no. That's go. what I'm saying is that that the, these people will also be charged for the cleanup of their yeah. mess. Yeah, the disposable yeah. of all of the hazardous materials. 
yeah, yeah we've heard of that before yeah. similar like totally different story but how the cop block people got all those huge fines for writing the chalk on the sidewalk and the cops mm. were like oh we had to come out and pressure wash it it was like three grand to remove the chalk from the sidewalk or whatever it's like oh like my really God. it's just sending a message it. you know <laughs> yeah really so, i'll do it for three grand well we had we also had another incident last week tuesday while we were on the air uh firefighters find a possible marijuana grow house well, firefighters were responding to a house fire Tuesday morning. Uh, they called the police and on suspicion that the residents were growing marijuana. Well, they were putting out the blaze on the 900 block of Looking Glass Lane. Fighters found, firefighters found items inside that made them conclude that people could be raising marijuana there. The two men in the residence drove themselves to the hospital with minor injuries from the fire. And then they found in the house 77 marijuana plants, 43 pounds of marijuana ready for sale, 45 pounds of shake, and 22.7 grams of cocaine and four firearms. Wow. <laughs> yeah. so that's federal charges. A friend of the owner answered the door at the house and said that uh, that the owner was not available, but he has a medical marijuana card. Oh, so, man. But once again, this goes to too many plants, and then you throw in cocaine, cocaine. firearms. You're just asking to get yourself a federal charge. Well, you know, and oddly enough, class, uh Cocaine is a class two controlled substance, so the, the government thinks that cocaine is actually more acceptable as a medical use than marijuana. Well, what about even on a lower Nevada level? Do you remember when Julio Cesar Chavez was fined nine hundred thousand dollars for testing positive for marijuana after his boxing fight? But yet the same Nevada State Athletic Commission, who manages both the UFC and boxing, when John Jones, the UFC light heavyweight, uh, the light heavyweight. UFC champion tested positive for cocaine after a fight recently. They issued him no fine, no suspension, and he got no trouble at all. They're just like, oh, well, and their excuse was it was, it was never... medicinal coke? No, they said it was never actually <laughs> written into the bylaws of the Nevada State Athletic Commission that cocaine was to be this punishable offense. But since marijuana gets all this attention, apparently, it was written into the laws. So se technically, since it's not written in, they decided not to pursue that punishment at that time or something. And so it's he just won like, from a technicality? Well, in all fairness, he still won the fight. You know, he, he, he kicked the dude's butt. But and still, you don't it's think like, cocaine would have any, it, have any performance enhancing abilities off of that i would think in a fight it would actually diminish it diminish it because you're you're already increasing your heart rate and you throw cocaine on top of that it's just asking well, for trouble and the whole thing is like it doesn't stay in your system as long as cannabis does so mm -hmm. he would have had to do it before the fight or something within two or three days i would think uh it just seems funny to me that you know such a a professional who has so much on the line would think about it a little more but that's not what i'm talking about we're just talking about the fairness of cannabis versus uh other drugs and how stigmatized cannabis has become in our society well also in in boxing and, and as in i believe in all sports cannabis is a performance enhancing drug it, it truly is i mean it makes you feel better and i can imagine in boxing you're going to hurt a little bit less when you get hit uh, you're going to be a little bit more loose, so the, the, they're not going to take as much. So uh, I happen to disagree with you <laughs> because disagree. somebody if somebody hits you when you're when you're um, high, you'd be like, "Oh, dude, I don't want to fight." <laughs> <all>. Come on! <laughs> oh my god! Stop hitting right. me and yeah. just hit the bong. Speaking about decisions, <laughs> uh, the pesticide decision. The pesticide. Oh, oh, about the laboratories here in Nevada. Okay. Laboratories here in Nevada. You know, um, the we have a lab advisory committee, and one of our board members, Jason Sturtzman's on that lab uh, advisory committee. They had uh, they have issues now with pesticides and also with heavy metal testing, um, where there was a decimal point wrong, and instead of parts per million, it was parts per billion uh, for heavy metal testing. For well, the for what for the acceptable amounts that were allowed into the medicine is for the minimal acceptable amounts, but most people don't know that arsenic is arsenic is bioavailable in a lot of uh, plants naturally. Yeah, I remember a couple of years ago, someone like the FDA or someone put out this warning. They're like, "Oh, be careful about the hundred percent fresh squeezed apple juice. It's got a lot of arsenic." And I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Like, we're trying to eat healthy here, and we have to worry about arsenic and like mercury in the fish and." All kinds of stuff. Well, it's true. In the seeds or the pips of like um, apricots, peaches, apples, arsenic is naturally occurring. And mm. so arsenic and, and certain heavy metals are naturally occurring in certain plants. Well, these, these issues came up and the dispensaries can't open until the advisory committee 
um, and get with the pesticide, you know, the people with uh, pesticide testing and figure out what the minimum amount of pesticides are and also what are acceptable to test um, the, to test with. There are 8,575 card holders close to, uh, and close to 6,200 of them in Clark County and they're not going to be able to buy cannabis legally until this problem gets fixed. Well, the advisory committee was going to be meeting on March 4th to talk about this problem. And I think there's a medical marijuana business association meeting tonight after this program, uh, meeting at Lola's to talk about it. But guess what the state did? The state had a jump on it. They utilized their executive authority or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know how the state does. Well, they fixed the issue before the lab advisory committee could even meet. And it's like, well, let, let's well, give whoa, you whoa. some power. Oh, did they fix it? Or did yeah, they they already fixed it. It was a clerical it. error, so all they did was all they did was fix it in, in the in the in the language because so it was it's a clerical not, error. And so it's not a bad it's, thing. It's gone away. So it's not a bad thing. It's just a matter that they didn't wait for the advisory board that they put to supposedly well, advise know, them to issue well, the advice. I don't know exactly. if, it, is, if it's that matter. I'm sure that they had already heard from the advisory board that, hey, there's something wrong and we're, we're going to have to fix this. And I'm, I'm sure it got right down through the grapevine in there. And somebody did the right thing, I think, in the state and said, hey, look, there is a clerical error here and boop, and, and made the change and well, made it to where we don't have to go through all you that. You know, so, I kind of was involved in that a little bit. Mm -hmm. well, I asked Jason to email Tick and tell him what the problem was so that they could get heads up up in state and and so that we could fix it you know so what happens now so what happens now is that everything's okay mm -hmm. they they still got to lay down some more regulations and everything um and as soon as they they get all those finished down uh, the, the, everything will be ready to roll well and but regardless of whether the rules are in place the amount of uh, the amount of um cannabis that's going to be for sale initially is not going to be a lot because they're going to be getting it from patients right none of these cultivations are up and running no productions are up and running they all still have to be inspected by the state uh the building inspectors and so, then issued licenses so anytime the dispensary is open when the dispensary is open it will be patient medication that is fueling for at least the first few months yeah, yeah. Well, so we haven't had a we still don't have a final date on when the labs might open we don't even have a final date on when the last recommendations will be issued by the committee well the committee met for the first time on january 29th they're going to meet again on march 4th um they are looking they are looking at meeting every other week until labs are up and going and they set that standard for themselves because they were going to meet once every month and that's not enough to get anything, especially in right. a new industry. That's not enough. They've got to meet every week or every two weeks until until something gets up and running. Well, really. it's like I was reading a thread on, once again, reading a Facebook thread about being a medical marijuana patient in Nevada. And I kind of stole a little comment that someone had. And the guy said, having a medical marijuana card in Nevada is like paying hundreds of dollars a year for a fishing license, only to be told that there's nowhere you can legally fish. And all we're trying to do is open the fishing holes, and they won't let us. Like buying a <laughs> fishing license for Death Valley? Yeah, exactly. It's killing me. <laughs> oh, my. And, you know, but the thing is, is that, and uh, I think somebody came back to that. I read the same thread. Somebody came back to that and said, I call it growing insurance. And that's kind of what I call mine. Oh, absolutely. I'm not giving my card up or anything like that. But it's just... It is frustrating when we're pitching to these people. We're like, hey, you should get on the program. This is what you should do, this and that and the other. And, and they're like, where do I buy it? Exactly. And we have to tell them, well, you know, you can go to you can go to Weed Maps, you know. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't have to just be growing insurance. I mean, if, if you're going to use it and you're using for medical reasons, you should have a card. I mean, you never know when Agreed. you might get caught transporting it or, you know, whatever it is. That's and why if I got you have a card... Show. You know, you're That's you're that much saver. You have some legal recourse to stand I'm back on. I have a doctor that says I should use this. Absolutely. Seeking protection under the law. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I'm all about the law when they're not coming after me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Um, I think that we should go and talk about 
Alaska. I, say, I got some more Nevada news. You do? Yeah, I got some funny news uh, out of it. Carson City, the sheriff's log. There was a there was oh, a couple God. there was a couple incidences this last weekend. Um, on Saturday night, two people were arrested for on suspicion of felony drug trafficking char- charges, um, for and and for allegedly driving a stolen vehicle. They were arrested after search of the vehicle. They turned up 1.3 ounces of meth and seven grams of heroin. Oh, okay. Now the, that these are obviously are medical pa- patients, but. On the same day, at 10.37 p.m., a 25-year-old was arrested on suspicion of domestic battery offense, first offense, after allegedly fighting with his mother over a claim she stole his marijuana. (laughs) He's now being held on a $3,000 bail. (laughs) That might fly in a medical state, man, but... uh... Oh my God! This is a medical state. Well, yeah, well, so, like, give me my pot, Mom. Or I'm gonna beat you up. <laughs> yeah, she she That's she crazy. took his pot, and they got in a, a domestic violence, and uh, now he's sitting in jail and waiting waiting on somebody to bail him out. And I'm sure it's probably not going to be his mom. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh my goodness. All right. So anything anything else we got from Reno? Hey, Perry, you got something from Reno? I have one story about hash oil explosions written by a guy named Guy Farmer. And he says that we should pay attention to this hazard because Carson City will, quote, welcome two medical marijuana establishments and at least two grow operations later this year. He says there is no legal way to make hash oil. Miss Durkin told the Seattle Times a hash oil explosion is like a bomb going off in a home. And uh, the quest, like, basically what this is about is should be people be able to to make these concentrates in their own home or not if well, they're medical patients first of all can it be you done can do, safely can you it can be do done? cold water extractions for hash we're talking about oils like if you're making butane hash oil yeah, they're or talking about like blasting that, oh you're yeah. talking about earwax yeah they're talking you know can it be done safely because they're giving these stats about you know deadly hash oil explosions in a grand junction motel and upscale colorado springs building you know uh people you know they're talking about all of the burn unit uh incidents that are happening in areas like colorado and washington now and these locals up north are just like look we don't want to see this uptick in quote accidents happen because of this new and emerging industry we just want to make sure that the people who are doing this are actually licensed to do it and are doing it correctly and i hear what they're saying but i also don't want to have the only concentrates be corporate i I've, I've had uh oils CO2? made by made by people here locally and it's really really top shelf stuff so i know it can be done right i just want to i, I just wonder how how it can uh, be be done properly how can we license these uh or give a pass to these the, these small time people who are just doing it for patients. Oh, you mean so you're not talking about the big CO two no, extraction? No, I'm talking about oh, yeah. talking if you're doing about, it in your house. Well, um, I don't know. I know a lot of people that kind of make this stuff, and I don't. I have not heard of any incidents where they have blown any pieces or parts off. Oh no, but this is just you know people like to take the incidents of people doing it wrong and. Uh, and show how it should, you know, oh, this is terrible and, you know, this is what can happen. And, of course, I don't like to be collectively responsible. I don't feel like the actions of one person should reflect upon everyone. But uh, that's just me. Once again, though, it does bring up a, a valid point of the this happens. And if we are going to have legal marijuana and we are going to have people doing this, how do we address this potential issue or how do we educate people on how to do it properly and safely if they are going to choose to do it? So... That's what I get out of it. Well, I think that these incidents is like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> I don't think that there is an increase in these in these amounts of explosions. I think that we're just paying more attention to the ones that do happen because because it they're being um, no doubt they're being sensationalized and they're being used as examples. But it, as the advocates for the industry, it is our job to attempt to address these issues, I guess, and uh, put these fears to rest if we can, or if there's anything we can do to put these fears to rest in the eyes and ears of the non-believers. So, we'll Okay, see. well, um, I don't know. I guess ju- just your, the local people that are doing it and that have done it um, seem to, like, have a good handle on it. They even have vacuum extractors and yeah. all sorts well, yeah, of we, things. We, we just need to be continue to, I guess, uh, lead by example. Yeah, it comes down to if you're going to do something like that that's dangerous, you need to take every safety precaution you can. So, I mean, just be smart about it. Okay. 
All right, we have uh, some more people in the industry, in the entertainment industry, coming out about smoking cannabis. You know, G.I. Jane, <laughs> Jane Fonda, 77 years old. She admits that she smokes pot every now and then. Big surprise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I smoke some now, then then I smoke some later. Yeah, no every kidding. now and then. She doesn't well, smoke anymore or any less. <laughs> no, not anymore or any less. But no, actually, she's she's saying now that in um, Du Jour's spring 2015 issue, she said that she has a strong belief that older people have a greater sense of well-being, older women in particular. And she said, it's like, what the hell do we have to lose? She admits that she still lights up on occasion. She says, I smoke pot every now and then. Um, she com It comes with a caveat, of course. And she says that she cannot see a movie on pot the number of movies she's seen thinking this is probably the best i've ever seen increases when she's smoking out i don't know i, t I tend to like be the opposite when i'm smoking out i'm like this is dumb Ugh. it depends on the movie it depends on the strain <laughs> i guess so and if it's a comedy or not no doubt all right we're gonna go on a break now and we'll come back with more national news The Von Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com you're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Good afternoon, and thank you for uh, joining us on Nevada Cannabis News. I have a story here out of Alaska. Today, Alaska became the third state in the United States to go recreationally legal after the ballot initiative passed yeah. in November. So it's a uh, it's a great day to be a, an American and a great day to be a cannabis supporter. Just one more one more domino fell today, mm -hmm. and it's just uh, being my second home. I'm, it's really proud for sure. It's a proud day. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. In Alaska, portions of the legalization measure that voters approved by a 53% to 47% margin back in November went into effect. While it will still take several months for the state government to craft regulations and dole out licenses, Alaska residents will now be allowed to grow their own cannabis and possess it legally. And also in Washington, D.C., where voters approved legalization in November by a huge 70% to 30% margin, the clock on a mandated congressional review period of the city's law is expected to run out on Thursday clearing the way for the measure to take effect. While Congress can pass resolutions of, dis <clears throat> of disapproval to overturn local laws in the district, political observers say it is unlikely to happen in this case. So that, once again, after all the, the talk about, oh, you know, they're going to stop D.C. from implementing it and all that, you know, back and forth, it turns out they're really going to just kind of back off and let it happen. You so. know, that it, it's just crazy that they would, they, you know, everybody speculated this, but we got to keep in mind, this is the district that their mayor smoked crack and got re-elected, folks. <laughs> yeah, and refused to step down. Well, refused to step no, down and then oh. got re-elected by the people. Hey, oh, we want our crack smoking mayor. Look. But that's the will of the people. It is what it is. If they want Marion Barry representing them, it's their right to have Marion Barry representing them. 
if the people of Washington, D.C. want to have recreational marijuana legal in their district, it shouldn't be the voice of one person who slips in some pork into an omnibus bill and allows them to circumvent the will of all those thousands of people. It seems genuinely un-American. It definitely goes against his supposed Republican ideals of small government and keeping their nose out of people's business. And it really just spits in the face of the democratic process. So I'm really happy that it was just more bark and maybe he was just trying to maybe you know get he maybe he knew all along this wasn't going to happen and he was just trying to get points with his conservative friends or something who knows what this was really all about but just thankfully it's going to happen okay well well the alaska the good comes with rules and regulations for sure so even though it is legal today to possess and to smoke cannabis in alaska the rules are that Anybody that um, smokes marijuana in public is going to get a $100 fine. Yep. Um, or somebody between 18 and 20 who possesses or uses or displays marijuana, $100 fine. The, the age for consent, I guess, for smoking marijuana is 21 in Alaska. So 18-year-old, 19, 20 years old, uh, you, it does not apply to you. Um, overall, the bill was met with support uh, by both the campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol in Alaska and an industry group called Coalition for Responsible Cannabis Legalization. Those are, the, those are good folks, that second group of people. Um, folks. So that's, there, there are some rules that go with the responsibility of having cannabis in, in your community, but I think that all in all, it's just going to you know release a lot of people um from their legal issues from cannabis but with that legalization there's like a a bill going through the alaska uh legislature right now and it was really really bad when it first started out it was going to roll back all kinds of the uh the protections that were included in the ballot initiative and it got so much resistance they decided to back off and write a new bill and uh an updated uh draft of senate bill 30 was reviewed Wednesday by the Senate Judiciary Committee and its counterpart, the identical House Bill 79, was heard simultaneously in the House Judiciary Committee. And it says marijuana will be treated as a regulated substance under Alaska law and it will no longer be a controlled substance in Alaska. Now, this is really weird because they passed the ballot initiative and now they're trying to pass a law to clarify some of these things even before the bill goes into effect. Not at all like Nevada who no. likes to wait for years and years and then go back and revisit later on. They're trying to get ahead of this. And uh, the bill will create a few new crimes involving uh, for misconduct involving marijuana, including selling any amount of marijuana without a license, possessing more than six plants, uh, more than 25 plants would be a class a misdemeanor transporting more, more than one ounce of usable marijuana giving marijuana to someone other under 21 or manufacturing marijuana concentrates or extract using a volatile or explosive gas hmm. Hmm. sounds familiar very familiar <laughs> yeah. so, well, well there's a also in north pole alaska not on north pole <laughs> it's a town well yeah they uh, passed an ordinance uh on private property pot use now most of the laws say you have to consume on private property, um, but there's been some incidences where people have been consuming on private property, like their front porch, and still got busted. Busted. Well, uh, the North insight. Pole City Count, the North Pole City Council said that city residents can use marijuana on private property in plain view of the public as long as it is not a nuisance. Unfortunately, I don't believe they define nuisance in the city in that city council meeting, so that's still up to interpretation. Unfortunately, but. It's a step in the right direction. Well, I'd like to like go off topic just a little bit today and talk about IP1. Um, if you guys have not heard about IP1 here in Nevada, this is about the nastiest thing that I have ever heard of. Do you know that if you get a license to cultivate, produce, and to dispense marijuana in the state of Nevada, you might have to go through something like Southern Wine and Spirits to distribute your own product to your own dispensary. Yeah, this is how the alcohol lobby is going to attempt to seize control of our industry. DeLuca Liquor and Southern Wine and Spirits wants to distribute cannabis like they want to distribute alcohol. And they've done a very good job over the past 30 or 40 years of basically strangling every business, including the casino corporations and other entities that want to uh, operate in this town. There was an incident with Hogs and Heifers, a small local bar, where this biker bar didn't serve Jack Daniels for almost a decade because there was a beef with a liquor distributor. And it's just one of those things. It wasn't that it's not available to them at the store. It's that the local provisions disallowed them from circumventing the establishment. And uh, 
it's it's pretty sickening actually to see them come to the table with this because I didn't see them in legislature. I didn't see them lobbying for nope. the bill. I nope. didn't see them putting any effort forth on behalf of this, and they're just riding our coattails so conveniently. And now to, they're trying uh, to get a vig off of every ounce of marijuana yeah, that, in this state that, that, of that Nevada. That makes me sick. I mean, if the, how can we fight this, Jen? Well, this is how you can fight this. I want you to write and call and email and. Anything that you can to your representative up in the legislature right now and tell them to strike down, to not hear, to Will kick them in the butt. Will this bill be heard this session? Uh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's, and, that's classy. Yeah, exactly. So they go up there and it's 16 so, pages of F you to you know, all the Nevada cannabis you know patients. What? That really makes you And MME what about, establishments. What about your uh, interim legislative council uh, committee that you had gotten assigned to that had all these recommendations and they had all these public meetings where people could come speak their minds and and they had all this stuff that we were supposed to do and it's funny because when i look through the bill drafts i don't see anything about any of those recommendations about protecting the patient's right to grow or the dui or protecting people from driving without getting arrested w without showing intoxication or the fact that we can't own uh, concealed weapons permits or any of those things they chose not to address any of that but what they are addressing are the people who had nothing to do with cannabis who are i don't want to call them our enemies but they're not our friends who, coattail riders who are now seeking to seize control of this that is it, it's disgusting it's disgusting and it needs to be stopped. So it, it, initiative petition or I think initiative petition one whoa, whoa. is what it's called. Initiative petition. So it's going to be a ballot question. Yeah. And you know, they're going to be, and it's put on by Southern Wine and Spirits, Lou Rubio, you know, and they've got a dispensary. And so they've got, they've already got their fingers starting into this pie. And do you know what? I want to cut them off. They do not need a part of the medical marijuana industry. They see it coming and they're like, oh, we've already, we've already, you know, got part of the, you know, um, alcohol industry. We've already, we've already gotten our fingers in this, in this industry. Now let's just dig them in further. And if you have a, a cultivation and production, you're going to have to go through these idiots to sell your own How stuff to you. How do you think you. that's going to react? How do you think normal people are going to react to that? It's going to push a lot of people to get their cannabis from black market sources again because it's just another layer of government they're going to have to go through. Not only another layer of government, but we're talking about more money. You know how much money is going to be tacked on to that final product? And it's of going course, to be passed on to the consumer. These like people, I said, the consumers are not going to buy it eventually. And once again, this is this is this is all rolling back into the master plan of theirs. They have already illegalized home growing, and now they're trying to monopolize the distribution. So once again, you're just going to have people recriminalizing this behavior and you're going to have, I, I don't know what's, what the end you result know, I've is. I'm emailed, sorry. I've emailed up to Carson City and said, hey, what about, what about this, this advisory committee that I was on? When am I supposed to come up there? When am I supposed to come up there? What you know what I've heard? What advisory committee? You know what I've heard? <laughs> not one word back. Of course not. So, I mean, I'm almost willing to just do just like I did with Facebook and go straight up to Carson in our little car and be like, you know what? I'm going to camp here until you guys hear me. We have, we have no choice. No, we well, we don't have any choice, but we do have announcements. <laughs> All right, uh, let's start off with some announcements. Uh, what we got this Saturday, our Pahrump Weekend Weekly Meeting uh, at the Town Diner out there in Pahrump at I think it's called Johnny's now. Johnny's, okay. The, formerly known as the Town Diner. All right, we have Grow Nevada on March 7th at 4 p.m. That's in our corporate office at 1771 East Flamingo, Suite 201A. Um, the cost is $25. We also have our 420 Las Vegas Freedom Festival that, that comes in April of 2015. April 19th. Yep. Um, Sunday, don't forget our 420 show. Yeah, our 420 show. We have a, our first cookbook coming out, and we do have a ton of recipes, so thank you for everybody that sent in recipes. But we're still looking for them. Please still email Stacy at WeCan702.org if you want to submit a recipe. If you want to get the latest news and information from WeCan, you can text 22828 to WeCan. Text WeCan to 22828. 22828. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And if you have any show comments, questions, or ideas, contact our producer, Beach, at WeCan702.org. As always, you can check out our Facebook that we regain control of. And Yay. 
and listen to us every Tuesday between 4 and 5 p.m. All right. Bye, everybody. And thank you so much for listening. 